everybody in. We want to be very inclusive, and we will be very inclusive. Uh, we have a, a great country, but we have a country that's in trouble. It's in big trouble in many ways, and we have to straighten it out. We have crime is through the roof. We have people pouring through our borders that are uh, not exactly perfect. Uh, they come out of prisons. They come out of prisons. Uh, 13,000 people convicted of murder. Uh, we don't need this in our country. We have enough difficulty. We don't need that. So I think people saw that. And uh, it just seems that the conservatives are voting very powerfully. <laughs> just finish it up. Go ahead. Uh, no, I feel very confident. I have uh, felt. You know, we went in with a very big lead today. And it looks like uh, Republicans have shown up in force. So we'll see how it turns out. But it seems that uh, they have really shown up in force. I just got a call from uh, Dan Patrick in Texas. He said he, they've never seen anything like it. So it's been very good. Sorry, what, what <coughs> Look, regrets. You always have regrets. I can't think of any, to be honest, to use her expression. I can't think of any. Um, I, I, look, I ran a great campaign. I think it was maybe the best of the three. Uh, we did great in the first one. We did much better in the second one, but something happened. And uh, this was the best. I would say this was the best campaign we ran. President Trump, do you accept the possibility that you and Vice President Harris both might not get to 270 electoral votes by the end of tonight? It should never happen. A thing like that should never happen. This election should be over. They spend all this money on machines. And frankly, if they'd use paper ballots, it would be over by 10 o'clock. And by the way, the paper ballots would cost 8%. It would be 8% of the cost. Uh, if they would use paper ballots, voter ID, uh, proof of citizenship and one day voting, it would all be over by 10 o'clock in the evening. It's crazy. Uh, they use these very expensive computers, and they, I'm hearing in Pennsylvania they won't have an answer till two or three days from now. Uh, I, I think it's an absolute outrage if that's the case. Now, maybe it'll be later, but it's uh, paper ballots in France. They went paper ballots because the mail in was not working, it was corrupt. And in France, they went paper ballots. And uh, at 10 o'clock in the evening, they had 37 million votes counted and done. They had a winner, they had a loser. And in this country, I mean, I'm just hearing that in certain states, uh, it's going to be a long time. And it, it won't even be close. It, it, it won't even be that close. They say, I'm going to win the state. But it's going to take a long time to certify it. Could you see a world, could you see a world where you don't declare victory tonight? Yeah, I mean, I'm hearing the same things that you're hearing. I'm hearing states where I'm up by a lot, but they won't have a final number for a long time. What are your plans for the night in terms of watching the, the results and so forth? So we're going to have a uh, very special group of people, many of whom you know, and they'll be at Mar-a-Lago. In addition, we'll have four or 5,000 people at the convention center. On the assumption I win, I mean, I don't know if uh, something else happens. I don't know what's going to happen in terms of declaring victory, but uh, if in normal times I would go over to the convention center, let's say at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock or something, but I just don't know. It looks like we have a very substantial lead. It looks like we have many more Republicans voting today than Democrats. So if you have a lead and we have a bigger vote, that means you're doing very well, but they have to call a winner. They should. And they should call a winner, yes. Just stop talking about that. Go ahead. Oh, I don't know. I was uh, honored to get Joe Rogan last night. I mean, if, if Joe Rogan's a big deal. He's a very uh, respected person. And I, I must tell you, Megan was fantastic. She got up and said some things that were really pretty amazing. But before that, I, I just think we ran a good campaign. I had good policy. I had. Uh, we want people to come into our country, but they have to come in legally. You know, we want strong borders, and we want people to come in. We want to be totally inclusive, but they have to come in. I think that was a big issue. To me, that was the biggest issue. I may be wrong. You know, a lot of people said inflation. Inflation's a disaster, but I think it's a second issue. I think the first is the border. We can't allow uh, criminals to be put back into our country or to be put into our country. So you have 13,000-plus uh, murderers allowed to roam in our country. 
not going to be allowed. They have to go. You have drug dealers. You have uh, terrorists. You have you have a tremendous amount of people that should not be in our country. And we need strong borders in this country. And I think people are voting. And I think it's personally, I think it's a number one issue. We'll see how it pans out. But I think it's a number one issue. <laughs> I don't have to tell them that. I don't have to tell. I don't have to tell them that that there'll be no violence. Of course, there'll be no violence. My supporters are not violent people. I don't have to tell them that. And they, I certainly don't want any violence. But I certainly don't have to tell. These are great people. These are people that believe in no violence. Unlike your question, you believe in violence. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, I think I'll be at Mar-a-Lago for the most part. We have a lot of political professionals. I'm going over now with Melania, who uh, I'm very proud of. She's got the number one bestseller. Can you believe that? He can believe it. But uh, so we're very proud of the job she's done with that. Her book is number one. But uh, we're going to go over to the office in West Palm, and we're going to say hello to the workers. They've worked very hard. I think so. I mean, I hear we're doing very well there uh, in Georgia. I hear we're doing very well. I, I think I hear we're doing very well everywhere. <laughs> now, I may be I may regret that statement, but uh, I'm hearing that we're doing very well. <laughs> Would you go louder? No, I haven't prepared a speech. No, I, I did speeches last night. And, all day long, all night long. At two o'clock in the morning, we left, and uh, we did we did a lot of speeches. You can probably tell. But no, I, I don't have to do that. I, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not uh, a Democrat. I'm able to make a speech on pretty quick notice. If I win, I know what I'm going to say and. I don't even want to think about the losing part. I would like to tell uh, all of the people that are in line to stay in line. Uh, we have tremendous Republican lines, and uh, I've been asked actually to say it. Uh, it takes a while. I'd like to just make uh, the statement that I'd like the Republicans to stay in line. Democrats, if they'd like, they can leave. But I'd like the Republicans to stay in line. <laughs> I have no pressure whatsoever. I'm winning big cases. Those cases are all being won. The biggest case was the Florida case, and it's been won. I appreciate your nice question. Sir, you and Mrs. Trump have been doing this. No pressure whatsoever. For nine, for nine years. Regardless of what happens tonight, is this your last campaign? Or are, you, are you done after this? Yeah, I would think so. I, mean, I would think so. How do you feel about it? Sad. About that? Sad and... Very fulfilled. I, I think we're going to have a very big victory today. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a plan in place to start naming staff and already a transition team? But I don't like talking about that until I find out uh, how we do. I mean, so how does that sort of come back from Iran and sort of assassination well, it doesn't. Look, we're not looking to do damage to Iran, but they have they can't have a nuclear weapon. That's so, you know, my terms are very easy. They can't have a nuclear weapon. I want to I'd like them to be a very successful country, but they just can't have a nuclear weapon. Well, I think Secret Service has been a little bit uh, tougher, to put it mildly. I see more machine guns than I've ever seen in my life. We're surrounded by, I, I feel very confident with Secret Service. I think they've stepped up. Look, for a long time, they didn't give us the help. They didn't give us the uh, assets, as they say, the manpower, woman power. They didn't give it to us. And would have rallies. You saw the rallies, 50, 60,000 people. And I'd, let, I'd have less people than Joe Biden, who had five people show up. And I'd have 55,000 people show up. And I had fewer people than him. So they should have uh, done a much better job. And, and frankly, and frankly, the president should make a very strong statement to the outside world because I think my team is incredible. Look, they say it's the best run campaign they've seen. Some people said it's the best run campaign they've ever seen, but 
in order to make that stick, you have to win. How do you feel compared to your past campaigns? Are you more confident now than you were about your team than you were in the last two races? My team, I'm very confident in. And many of them are the same players. As you know, Susie, uh, a lot of the people are the same players. They've been very good. Mr. President, uh, Oprah said at Harris and Rally last night, quote, if we don't show up tomorrow, it is entirely possible we won't be able to count the ballot again. Well, I think it's ridiculous. You know, Oprah, I was on her last show or one of her last shows, and they picked the biggest people and all of that and uh, made a big deal. And uh, I'm actually, I'm disappointed. I think Oprah's become a major divider in our country. And I think, frankly, she'd be, she should be ashamed of herself. And you know who else should be ashamed? Fox. Because I've seen Oprah on Fox about 50 times making the same statement. And I think it's a disgrace what Fox does, because everyone thinks Fox is so pro-Trump. They're not pro-Trump at all. They've put Oprah on all morning long. That's all I see is Oprah. And, uh, you know, I do Oprah very well. She's been at Mar-a-Lago many times. Roger King had his funeral. That's the head of King World, which was Oprah's mentor. Uh, and Oprah chose the location. She said, Mar-a-Lago is the most beautiful place. Would it be possible to have Roger's funeral at Mar-a-Lago in the ballroom? We did it. The only time I've ever had a funeral there. And uh, I think Oprah should be ashamed of herself to say that. She should be ashamed. She knows me. She wanted to run with me as a vice president. She was going to be the vice president. She wrote me a letter. It's in the book. And now she goes and makes statements like that. She's a divider. And uh, Barack Hussein Obama is a divider, too. There are people who are concerned that you didn't concede the election in 2020 when you lost. They're concerned that if you lost this election, you wouldn't concede again. What do you say to those people? I think they're crazy. If I lose an election, if it's a fair election, I'm going to, I'd be the first one to acknowledge it. Uh, and I think it's, well, so far, I think it's been fair. I think there's been a lot of court cases. Both sides are lawyered up. Thousands of lawyers are involved, you know, thousands, can you imagine? And part of that is because we have too complicated a process. If we had a piece of paper, watermarked, you know that paper is more sophisticated now than computers. It's watermarked paper. You cannot, it's, it's, you cannot, it's unbelievable what happens with it. There's nothing you can do to cheat. And of course, you have practically nothing to run. Think of it. We spend hundreds of millions and billions of dollars on these campaigns. You could do it for 8% of the cost and have accuracy. And we wouldn't have to be worried about when is Pennsylvania going to announce. It's, a, it's really a shame. Sir, Last question. Last week, Colin Butler said that RPG would not be engaged with Secretary. Does he speak Well, he knows exactly what, but that's only based on what RFK told us. I don't think RFK wanted that. You're talking about yeah. health and human services. And that, Let me tell you, he's a great guy, RFK, and he's going to do pretty much what he wants as far as I'm concerned. He wants health for women, for men, for children. And he, I happen to agree with a lot of the things he uh, says. The one thing uh, I told him, and I've told you in speeches for the last two weeks, we got to keep him away from the liquid gold, because the liquid gold, we have more than any of it. It's called, called oil and gas. That one I'm going to handle. Well, I'd be honored to have him. Now, I mean, I haven't spoken to Howard about that, but uh, look, he, if you think of it, he came in third, you know, in running for president, right? He ran a very good race. He was, he had obstacles. The Democrats just really unfairly put obstacles up. And hence, a Kennedy left the Democrat Party for the Republicans. Now, he's a very smart guy. He's a very caring guy. He's very popular, too. We get up and introduce him. The place goes wild. No, we love having him. And you know who else we love having? Elon. He's been great. And, and everybody, look, everybody. Getting Joe Rogan last night. And Megan Kelly, we just have, this is very inclusive. This is a movement. This is the greatest political movement in the history of our country. And even you people, and some of you are fair sometimes, but it's the greatest movement in the history of our country. And I've made that statement a thousand times. It has never been challenged. It is the greatest movement. And we're going to make America great again. Thank you all very much.